Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we will start uh, complex power series. So, we will see complex power series uh, which will help us to uh, explore the properties, uh, the local properties of analytic functions uh, even further. So, uh, to begin with uh, we will see power series complex power series as an example of analytic functions and later uh, we will show that every analytic function can be expressed as a power series uh, around its point of analyticity. Okay. So, we will make that clear uh, in, in due course. So, uh, so firstly uh, to begin with I, uh, I will uh, give a refresher on uh, complex sequences and uh, series. So, the, uh, the, the definitions and uh, some of the preliminary results in complex sequences and series are very similar to uh, the results in the corresponding results in uh, real uh, analysis or uh, functions of one real variable, real functions of one real variable. So, let me first uh, define complex sequences. So, complex uh, sequences. So, what are complex sequences? A sequence like in the case of uh, real numbers, okay, a sequence of complex numbers okay, uh, is a function f from the set of natural numbers to the set of complex numbers. Okay. So, what that means is that assigned to each uh, natural number uh, or to each counting number there is a complex number. So, there is a first complex number, a second complex number etcetera uh, that we can talk of via this function f. So, uh, that is uh, that is a complex uh, sequence. Okay. So, f of 1 is usually called is called the first term of the sequence etcetera. Generally speaking f of n is called the nth term of the sequence. Okay. So, we can also talk about convergence of the sequence like we do for uh, real sequences. Okay. So, convergence. Okay. So, uh, a sequence a complex sequence in this case. Okay. So, a complex sequence okay. uh, a complex sequence I am switching to the notation a n. So, to, uh, to say what this a n is this f can also be denoted by. So, f of n is also denoted by a subscript n sometimes. Okay, the nth term of the series okay. and usually when one writes a n in soft, soft parentheses like this uh, that means uh, the sequence um, f. Okay. So, that means this particular sequence f whose nth term is given by a n a subscript n. Okay. So, a complex sequence a n is said to uh, converge Okay, uh, to a complex number L okay, uh, if for each epsilon positive uh, there is a corresponding n naught or n epsilon let me say uh, in the counting numbers such that for each n bigger than or equal to this particular n epsilon sorry back okay so um, what happens is the uh, absolute value the modulus of an minus l is strictly less than that particular uh, given epsilon okay so the number uh, number L is set is called the limit of the sequence a n. 
Okay. So, this, this definition is very similar to uh, the definition of convergence of a uh, sequence of real numbers to a limit L. Okay. So, uh, the only thing to notice here is that uh, in case of real numbers, we considered uh, the absolute value of a n minus l, where a n is the nth term of the series okay. and we wanted that to be less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to a particular uh, capital N okay, depending on epsilon. In this case, that uh, absolute value uh, is replaced by the modulus of the complex number a n minus l. Okay. So, apart from that particular uh, difference pretty much the definition is the same. Okay. So, we can use the modulus in uh, modulus of a complex number in place of the absolute value for uh, real numbers. Okay. So, for this uh, that is the definition of convergence. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we, we would like to uh, talk about a Cauchy sequence. Okay. So, like in the case of uh, real sequences we have uh, we can call a complex sequence Cauchy if, uh, if if a similar condition holds. Okay. So, here is the definition uh, a sequence. So, this is the next point a sequence a n of complex numbers okay, uh, is said to be Cauchy excuse me is said to be Cauchy uh, if for each epsilon greater than 0, there is a corresponding okay, uh, n epsilon belongs to uh, the set of natural numbers such that for any m bigger than n epsilon and n bigger than n epsilon, okay, the modulus of the complex number a m minus a n, okay, the difference the modulus of the difference like that is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So, the condition the, the condition for a sequence to be called Cauchy is very similar to the condition uh, for real sequences to be called Cauchy except that once again uh, the absolute value in the case of real numbers is replaced by uh, the modulus in the case of complex sequences. Okay. And uh, once again why is this Cauchy condition useful? Uh, once again, uh, I'll uh, I'll state that proposition here. Here is a proposition: uh, a complex sequence is convergent, okay, to some number l if and only if it is a Cauchy sequence. Okay. So, uh, this proposition uh, which I am uh, stating without proof, proof is very similar to the uh, real case. Okay. This proposition tells us that uh, complex uh, Cauchy sequences okay, can be judged to be convergent without actually knowing what the uh, limit is. Okay. So, just by considering the difference the, the modulus of difference of terms uh, eventually. Uh, you can you can conclude whether the sequence is convergent or not. Okay, so that's the uh, use of this Cauchy condition. Okay, so like you know from uh, real analysis, and then uh, we proceed to define complex series. Okay, this line. So consider a uh, complex sequence okay so let a n be a, a sequence okay complex sequence okay uh, and okay the formal sum okay a1 or a1 yeah a1 plus a2 plus so on a3 plus so on Okay, uh, is called the series sigma 
a n. Okay, so that formal sum where you add all the terms, okay, uh, in that uh, sequence, okay, is called uh, a series, a complex series. All right. So this is very similar to once again uh, a, a real series, okay, and the series we have the notion of convergence of series. The series uh, sigma a n is said to be okay. Uh, con or set to converge uh, to the sum s if the sequence of partial sums s n okay uh, given by so, you consider the partial sums S n equals A 1 plus A 2 plus so on until A n or more formally sigma j equals 0 through or 1 through n of A j. Okay. So, the sequence of partial sums uh, like that these S n's okay, uh, converges. Uh, to the limit s. Okay. So, you consider the sequence of partial sums and if this sequence converges to a limit s, you say that the uh, c series sigma a n itself converges to the sum uh, s. Okay. In this case, one writes uh, s is equal to sigma n or I will use j, okay. j equals 1 through uh, infinity okay, a j. So, that is the notation. So, uh, in this case one, one defines uh, okay, or one writes s that, that sum s like that. Okay. So, that is a notation for this sum s. If the sequence s n Okay, does the of partial sums okay, does not converge okay, then we say that the series sigma a n also does not converge. And uh, one can by by splitting a complex number uh, a n into its real and imaginary parts. Okay, one can conclude the following: sigma a n converges. Okay, if and only if uh, the sigma of real parts of a n. Okay, the real part of a n uh, and sigma of imaginary part of a n both converge. Okay, that is just by splitting uh, a complex number a n the nth term in the uh, uh, sequence a n uh, into its real and imaginary parts okay. and then that, that is used in the partial uh, sums sequence and uh, from there you can conclude this proposition. So, th this proposition the proof of this proposition itself is not very hard, it is just splitting a complex number into its real and imaginary parts. Okay. So, we will now see some properties of uh, series complex series. Okay. So, firstly if sigma a n converges, okay, then the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth term in the sequence from which we are constructing this series. Okay. So, limit as n goes to infinity of a n uh, is has to be uh, 0. Okay. So, uh, so, although I did not introduce this notation limit n goes to infinity 
a n okay it is uh, it is it is what it means in the case of uh, real uh, sequences okay so uh, notice the definition for convergence let me go back okay so notice the definition for convergence uh, in this in this case okay we write we normally write we write uh, limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to l this complex number l okay so that's the notation like in the case of uh, real sequences so the viewer might be familiar uh, with it from uh, real sequences and we are using a similar notation for complex numbers limit as n goes to infinity of an uh, is has to be zero uh, if sigma an if the uh, series sigma an converges okay so that's one that i'll call this as point 1 okay and the second of these is that there is a number m okay so i should say this is there is a real number m okay or even uh, further i can say there is a positive real number m such that well maybe i should uh, say there is a non negative because it could be zero there is a non negative real number m such that the modulus of an is less than or equal to m okay so uh, whenever the series converges sigma an the series sigma an converges the uh, modulus of the nth term okay for has to be less than or equal to m for every for every n belongs to m. okay so that has to hold for there is a fixed number m for which uh, modulus of an is less than or equal to m all right so this property is going to be uh, used uh, several times in the uh, in this or the coming lecture Okay. So, this is important and then uh, well the proof of either of these is very similar to uh, the corresponding proof for complex or uh, sorry uh, real sequences and series. Okay. So, I will omit the proof the proof is uh, very simple. So, it the viewer can treat it as an exercise. Okay. So, uh, that is property 1 and then property 2 if sigma a n and sigma b n uh, are both convergent uh, complex series okay, then sigma a n plus b n okay or more generally sigma a n plus c times b n okay uh, is also a convergent series complex series okay for any c belongs to c. So, for any fixed uh, for any c belongs to c for any uh, complex number like that the linear combination a n plus c b n is also a convergent uh, complex series okay whenever sigma a n and sigma b n are convergent once again the the proofs of these properties are uh, very easy absolute convergence a series sigma a n is said to be absolutely convergent okay if the series of absolute values of the nth term namely sigma absolute a n okay converges Okay. So, uh, and then 
by applying triangle inequality one can uh, one can show that uh, suppose that one can show the following suppose that the real series notice that the absolute value series okay where you take the modulus of the nth term and uh, consider the series uh, sigma modulus an okay that's a real uh, number real series okay series of real numbers okay and suppose that that real series converges okay then you can conclude that then sigma an converges okay so this property uh, can be proved using uh, triangle inequality on the partial sums okay and uh, and notice that this is also summed up sometimes as if a series is absolutely convergent then it is convergent okay so absolute convergence means the convergence of the absolute values series or the modulus uh, series okay in the case of complex numbers all right so um, now the fourth property is uh, the tests for convergence hold okay is about tests for convergence firstly okay so uh, we can apply uh, comparison test okay ratio test and root test and cauchy's nth root test okay uh, to test the convergence of of uh, sigma absolute an or sigma modulus an and if sigma a n is convergent sigma absolute a n is convergent then sigma a n is convergent by the above ok by property 3 by what we have just said ok. So, so since sigma absolute a n is uh, a real series we can use the usual um, comparison test ratio test and the nth root test okay and then uh, accordingly we can uh, conclude okay if sigma an is convergent okay so notice that in, in property 3 notice that if sigma an is convergent it does not imply that uh, sigma uh, absolute an is convergent you know of examples already uh, in the case of uh, real numbers. So, that that very same example applies for complex numbers as well. So, sigma minus 1 power n by n for example, is such a uh, is such a series okay, which is convergent, but not absolutely convergent all right. So, uh, now we can proceed actually to define uh, power series. Okay. So, power series. Okay, so, that was a uh, really sh uh, crash course a short course on uh, what complex uh, sequences and series are, okay. but since uh, the viewer is already familiar with uh, real sequences and series. Okay, so, uh, one can Im immediately extrapolate what the corresponding things are for complex sequences and series. Okay. So, um, the power series uh, for complex numbers though take an interesting turn. Um, uh, one can see uh, some important properties uh, like why the radius of convergence should be a particular number okay, in, the, in the context of complex series more clearly than in the case of uh, real series. Okay. I will elaborate this uh, at an appropriate moment. Okay. So, uh, for now uh, I am going to define power series. Okay. A series of the form is called a power series okay, uh, around 0 okay, in the variable z. 
So, z is a variable and that is called a power series around 0. Okay. So, if you are wondering why it is called a power series around 0. Okay. So, like in the case of real numbers a series of the form more generally a series of the form. Uh, so, let me use c naught here c naught plus c 1 z minus uh, a plus c 2 z minus a square plus so on okay, where c i s belong to complex numbers okay, is called a power series. Okay, around a around the complex number a okay, in the variable z. Okay. So, that is a complex uh, power series and uh, we will see that under appropriate conditions okay, sometimes these series converge. Okay. And uh, firstly note that uh, the first series okay, if you have power series around 0. Okay, so, power series around 0 okay, for example, or more generally power series around A okay, converges for one number at least namely 0 okay, converges for z equals 0 okay, or power series around A converges for z equals A. Okay. So, we so the set of points where this series converges is uh, at least uh, is at least non empty. Okay. So, but more is true depending on the coefficients uh, a naught or c naught in, in either of these cases. Okay. So, we will see uh, what happens. Okay. So, firstly uh, the notice that the partial sums. Okay. So, the partial sums of uh, this series. So, first let me call this series of type 1 and type 2 I have to keep going back to these two types. Okay. So, uh, I will I will talk about type 1 and uh, type 1 series power series and uh, similar statements hold for type 2 series. Okay. So, uh, so, here I am going to talk about this type 1 series the partial sums of uh, series 1 okay, um, are what are they? They are S naught equals A naught, S 1 equals A naught plus A 1 z, okay, S 2 equals I will just go until S 2 A 1 z plus A 2 z squared. So, actually they are all the partial sums are all polynomials in z. Okay. And the next best thing you can do to polynomials is sort of the infinite version of the polynomials which are these power series okay. A 1 z plus a 2 z squared so on until a n z power n. Okay. So, uh, a power series is said to be is said to be convergent okay, uh, at a point z naught at a point z equals z naught if if uh, the partial sums okay uh, sn evaluated at z naught converge okay to a limit Okay. So, if, a, if for a fixed z naught these partial sums converge, then we say that the power series converges at that particular uh, z naught. Okay. So, um, 
that is uh, the convergence okay, and then we will now uh, see examples. Okay. So, like in the case of real power series, we have the following examples. Okay. Uh, the first one is the uh, geometric series. Okay. So, what is the geometric series? This is 1 plus z plus z squared plus 1. Okay. So, we know by simple arithmetic that 1 minus z times 1 plus z plus z squared plus so on until z power n is 1 minus z power n plus 1. Okay. So, uh, 1 plus z plus z squared plus plus z power n which is the partial nth partial sum of the uh, geometric series okay, is 1 minus z power n plus 1 by 1 minus z. Okay. If of course, we need that z cannot be equal to 1. Okay. And uh, <coughs> so, since the limit on the right hand side okay, of n goes to infinity of z power n plus 1 is 0, if mod z is less than 1. Okay. Uh, what we can conclude is that when mod z is less than 1, when the absolute or the modulus of z is less than 1, okay, uh, the series, the geometric series sigma z power n, n equals 1 through infinity okay, or 0 through infinity in this case. Okay, uh, converges and it converges to 1 by 1 minus z. Okay. So, this term here up here this term is this tends to 0. Okay. So, uh, this geometric series converges to 1 by 1 minus z when the modulus of z is less than 1. Okay. So, uh, also sigma or z power n plus 1 diverges mod z greater than 1. Okay. Uh, and we know that, yeah. so in summary sigma z power n okay, uh, has two kinds of behavior, it converges to mod converges to 1 by 1 minus z when mod z less than 1 okay, and it diverges when mod z is greater than 1. So, we will not worry about its behavior uh, at, um, at the point mod z is equal to 1 i.e. on the uh, circle on the unit circle in the complex plane, but what is important is that the geometric series behaves in the following manner there is this disk, there is this unit disk, okay, there is this unit disk okay, uh, inside of which it converges okay, and outside of which um, it diverges. Okay. So, everywhere outside mod z outside the unit circle mod z strictly greater than 1 it diverges. Okay. So, there seems to be a disk of uh, convergence in this case. Okay. And we will see that this is typical of any power series. What I mean by that is we will see that there is a certain round disk in the complex plane okay, uh, in which uh, given power series converges. Okay. So, that is uh, the proposition that I am going to present. Okay. So, uh, here is a theorem. Okay to each power series okay, sigma a n z power n, okay, there exists a corresponding r okay, with 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to infinity what i yeah so so we will allow infinity to be uh, one value of r 
okay what that means is that r is unbounded okay called the uh, radius of convergence okay uh, with the following properties one uh, sigma a n z power n converges absolutely for every z with modulus of z strictly less than r okay and if mod z minus if mod z is greater than r okay there is a different behavior uh, if mod z is greater than r the terms of the series diverge of the series sigma a n z power n uh, diverge okay are unbounded are unbounded okay and hence the series is divergent okay so <coughs> this theorem okay so what it is stating is that there is uh, the behavior exhibited by uh, the geometric series is typical it's telling that not necessarily the unit disk but there is a disk uh, centered at zero for the power series centered at zero okay in which inside of which the power series converges absolutely and outside of which the power series uh, diverges okay and on the circle itself okay on the circle of radius r itself the behavior of uh, sigma a n z power n uh, is not uh, is not told by this theorem okay so what happens to sigma a n z power n uh, is not predicted by this theorem okay so so what is important is there is this number r the existence of this number r Okay, it could be small or it could be large which is uh, given in this bound. So, r can be anywhere between 0 and infinity. Okay. So, like I have already commented earlier r can be 0 okay. uh, and um, so we have seen that the power series of type 1 or type 2 converge at least for one point namely uh, the center of convergence itself namely uh, 0 in the case of type 1 and a in the case of type 2. Okay, so, it could be 0 I mean that could be the uh, set of uh, convergent points for the power series okay. and uh, it could be as large as infinity. Okay. So, um, we will see some examples of where the radius of convergence is infinity. Okay. So, uh, first we will uh, prove this theorem proof. So, the strategy is to let uh, let r be the supremum of the modulus of all such z's such that uh, sigma a n z power n okay, in absolute value. So, the, uh, this, the absolute value series sigma a n z power n converges. Okay. So, geometrically speaking, okay, so if we know a bunch of uh, points where around 0 where this series converges absolutely okay we are picking the z such as z okay uh, which is the supremum of all i mean such as z uh, whose modulus is the greatest if one exists or if you know if there are uh, many of these points then we pick the supremum of this set of this set uh, of modulus of such numbers Okay, and that is the candidate for our radius of convergence according to the theorem. So, if the modulus of z is strictly less than r, 
okay then since r is the supremum of this particular set above okay uh, then uh, there is a z1 okay such that modulus of z is less than modulus of z1 less than or equal to r okay and uh, and by definition of r uh, the there is uh, this z1 such that this a n z 1 power n converges absolutely. Okay. So, the series sigma absolute a n z 1 power n converges uh, and a z 1 there is such a z 1 between mod z and r okay, by the definition of r itself. Okay. So, since r is the supremum of uh, such, such mod z s. Okay. So, for this uh, for this series here, okay, we can say that uh, now there is an m greater than or equal to 0 such that such that uh, the nth term of this series okay, is less than or equal to m for every uh, integer n okay, every positive integer n or for every n greater than or equal to uh, 0. Okay. So, this comes from the property that I have listed earlier for a uh, series. So, let me go back allow me to go back here and point to this property here. Okay. So, if sigma a n converges there is a uh, this property says that there is a non negative real number m such that the modulus of a n is less than or equal to m for every n belongs to n. So, I am using that property for uh, sequences or series rather. So, the nth term is less than or equal to m for every n positive or n greater than or equal to 0. Then what happens is that the modulus of a n z power n is less than or equal to okay, is less than uh, or strictly less than modulus of a n times the modulus of uh, z by z 1 power n whole raised to n times z 1 power n in modulus. Okay. And I will club this a n and this uh, modulus of a n and modulus of z 1 power n and use this, this star here to say that this is less than or equal to m times modulus of z by z 1 power n. Okay. And since okay, by star this is by star. Okay. So, since modulus of z is less than modulus of z 1, modulus of z by z 1 is uh, less than 1. Okay. And so, this becomes a geometric series. Uh, I, I mean this becomes the nth term of a geometric series. Okay. So, since this is less than 1 uh, sigma m times modulus of z by z 1 power n okay, is equal to m times sigma modulus of z by z 1 power n okay, converges. And so, by comparison test okay, this real uh, number is lesser than this real number in comparison. Okay. So, by comparison test we can conclude that sigma a n uh, z power n converges absolutely right this is uh, less than this so this converges absolutely so we have proved part 1 of this theorem part 2 of this theorem asserts that if mod z is greater than r okay and uh, suppose and if uh, sigma a n z power n is convergent Okay, is convergent for okay, is convergent for that particular z with mod z greater than r. Okay, then there is okay, then what we can say is that there is an m greater than or equal to 0 such that the modulus of a n z power n is strictly less or less than or equal to m for every n. 
greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that is once again by the previous property. Okay. So, for any complex number w okay, with, uh, okay, with modulus of z greater than modulus of w greater than r, okay, the modulus of a n w power n will be less than or equal to the modulus of a n. Okay, so, I will include the z power n here. Okay, times the modulus of w by z power n, okay, which is less than or equal to by the above uh, by the above estimate, this is less than or equal to m times the modulus of w by z power n. Okay. So, it is a similar estimate to what we have done before in the previous case okay. uh, and uh, since sigma m w by z power n is a convergent geometric series okay uh, sigma absolute a n w power n is also convergent okay by comparison test but notice that the modulus of w is greater than r uh, and we are saying that there is a uh, number w whose modulus is greater than r uh, and sigma a n w power n is absolutely convergent. Okay. So, this is a contradiction to the definition of r, r is the what is r, r is the supremum of uh, all such modulus z uh, you know for which sigma a n z power n is absolutely convergent. Okay. So, here sigma a n w power n uh, is absolutely convergent and modulus of w is greater than the supremum of all such things. So, this is a contradiction uh, to the definition of r. So, this cannot happen. So, what cannot happen that uh, that this is convergent cannot happen. Okay. So, uh, sigma a n z power n is divergent. Okay, divergent for mod z greater than r. Okay. So, uh, that concludes the proof of this theorem okay. and I will uh, remark that uh, a similar statement holds, okay, a similar statement holds for uh, power series of type 2. What I mean by that is there is a disk of radius r around the point a inside of which uh, the power series converges the power series of type 2 converges and outside of which uh, the power series of type 2 diverges. Okay. So, that is uh, that is the statement in the case of power series of type 2. Okay. So, uh, we will conclude this uh, session here.